Hey y'all, what's going on? We're going to do the pro and expert guide here. This is the pre-tournament guide where we kind of just go over holes one through nine. We're going to talk about uh, different ways to play the holes. We'll just talk about some tips, um, ball selection, club selection, elevation changes and stuff like that. This is real kind of really just kind of like a pre-tournament thing to kind of get you all thinking in the right direction so that on Monday when you start playing your qualification rounds, you kind of have these ideas in your head. Uh, so depending on what kind of a wind we have and get on Monday, you know, you can kind of know how to attack each of these holes uh, and not just kind of be sitting there with uh, with no idea. So, you know, some of you all probably played these holes before, so that's kind of just a refresher to you. But if you are new, maybe you are playing pro or expert for the first time, this information definitely could help you, I think, in uh, helping start to prepare for the tournament to help uh, get you on the right path to a successful qualification opening and hopefully weekend round. So... We're going to go ahead and start. Uh, I'm going to turn the video off just to have really poor lighting here in this room currently. So we're just going to go with the actual screen and uh, me drawing on the screen. So we're going to go ahead and move on here. And I am going to turn the actual video portion off. There we go. All right. So we got uh, our first hole here. And, uh, you know, we got hole number one. And we start off with a par three. Um, this is not really that tough of a par three in my opinion. It's a par three that depending on what kind of a wind we have, you may be looking at using a wood club or um, a long iron possibly. I think the only time you'd use a long iron would possibly be if you have some sort of a tailwind. For, for most cases, side winds and headwinds though, we'll be using our wood club. I like to use the sniper. That's kind of my club of choice. And uh, the way you're going to, you know, want to try to attack this hole is, in my opinion, from the left side of the green. Um, and, you know, that's the way I would suggest to attack this hole. You know, you want to try to attack it from the left side of the green. You will be playing this shot with a 20% elevation change. So that means you're going to add a 20% extra wind to whatever your wind amount is. So let's just say, let's just say you have an eight miles per hour wind. Well, 10% of eight miles per hour would be 0.8. So 20% would be 1.6. So you add 1.6 to eight. So that means you would play the wind as if it was 9.6 miles per hour. I think you'll be looking at this shot somewhere around two to three backspin with your uh, wood club. And depending on what kind of a wind you have, either like left to right or right to left, uh, that may definitely predict the way that you're going to come in at this hole, either from the right side or from the left side of the pin. So definitely keep that in mind. There's also definitely the opportunity to play a guardian shot here. Um, if you're going to play the guardian shot, you're going to go more directly to the green, and you're going to use pretty much full backspin I would say with the shot. Anytime you're going to use the Guardian you're going to probably use a lot of its backspin because that is its uh, strength. So for that shot you definitely would be going to the green for the shot. Uh, if you do have to use the Goliath um, or maybe the B-52, if you do have the B-52 at least level 5 plus, you'll be aiming that one pretty much the same spot that I have circled to play with the, uh, the wood club. So uh, yeah. As far as wind or as far as your ball goes, I would definitely say some sort of a wind resistance ball. Um, you know, cheap, cheap is Navigator or, you know, Kingmaker. Or if you want to go with some sort of a special uh, level 4, level 5 wind resistance ball, that may be a good idea on this hole. I like to use my better balls more on the weekend round, but some people have a high stock of them and uh, use them in all the different rounds, so that's definitely... A decision that you have to make. Okay, I move on to the next hole. And uh, we got uh, hole number two. And this is a par four. This par four here will play off the tee box with plus 10% elevation change. As far as the club that you'll be using off the tee box, you know, that may, that may differ from pro to expert, depending on what clubs that you have. Uh, I definitely recommend uh, 
a driver with power and accuracy. So, you know, Expert Plus may be looking at uh, APOC, um, higher level Thor, maybe a level 8 extra mile. If you're in the Pro, you're most likely looking at uh, an extra mile, maybe a little bit lower level APOC, like level 3, uh, or a Thor. So pick out whichever driver best suits you, maybe which one you're most comfortable with, and uh, what can definitely what can put you in the best position to get the to get the eagle here. Depending on what kind of a wind we have, you know, for the most part, we're going to be looking to try to get our shot somewhere in this zone. Um, you'll be bouncing your ball somewhere in here, and it'll be bouncing kind of. With some topspin and right spin, be careful not to use too much topspin. Um, you know, I'd say somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four bars of topspin. Anything more than that can risk going into that rough right there. Definitely something that you don't want to do. You really just want to get yourself set up in a position to give you a chance at the eagle. And uh, the best way to play the eagle is either... Um, going with a long iron with lots of backspin or your thorn. Now with the thorn you have two options. Number one option would be a dunk. Number two option would be a backspin shot to the hole. Uh, for the shot you will be playing a minus 10% because uh, it is an uphill shot. You either can go for the dunk or you can go for the shot where you use full backspin and depending on what direction wind you have, you go with one side spin in the direction of the wind and then offset your shot either left or right of the hole. The reason we do this is to avoid hitting the pin. If you hit the pin with full backspin, you will most likely end up back in this bunker. So we want to avoid that at all costs. That's definitely one risk involved in going for the dunk on this hole. You know, if you get the dunk dialed in, you got it dialed in. Definitely, it's a great play. If you don't have it dialed in, maybe you're a little bit nervous about playing the shot, I would more than likely suggest trying to go for the backspin shot, um, you know, and keeping yourself safe. At worst case scenario, you miss the backspin shot, you're still putting for the birdie. Um, but if you mess up with the dunk and hit the pole, then you could be uh, chipping out of the sand for the birdie. So definitely, you know, that's not a scenario that you want to find yourself in, uh, I don't believe. So, ball selection here. Um, you got to have a ball with some side spin. I would look at the Katana or Kingmaker, in my opinion. Um, and definitely, you know, I like the Saturn. I like the Thorn for the other two clubs uh, as far as the long iron and the short iron goes. If we do have like a nice like left to right tailwind on this hole, it is possible to try to get your shot maybe um, a little farther up into this fairway, like maybe in that zone right there. In which case, then you can go for like a, a short iron or wedge shot where you drop your shot right here on the fringe into the hole. You know, and that's definitely a possibility, but that's very wind dependent. Do we or do we not get the kind wind on the drive? I don't think they'll give us that kind of a wind, but you never know. So definitely, you know, keep that in the back of your mind. You know, you can get a little bit more aggressive on the tee shot when you get a little bit nicer wind. And this is a tee shot where you will need to use some curl for your shot, uh, especially if you have some sort of a a wind that's not going in the direction of your shot. So definitely keep that in mind as well for this par 4. Alright, we'll move on. Hole number 3. Hole number 3, par 5. Alright, hole number 3, par 5. This is a hole that uh, I really enjoy. I really like this hole. Um, for the tee shot, plus 10% is your elevation change. As far as your ball selection goes here, um, I definitely recommend a ball with a little bit extra power. So, you know, Titan, uh, Kingmaker, if you want to go with the power four ball, maybe a power four ball with some wind resistance may be nice 
for this hole. As far as your club goes, you got to have a club with uh, some curl and top spin. Now, if you have a right to left tailwind off the tee box, then you don't have to worry so much about the curl. But if you don't have a wind going with your shot, then you do have to use a little bit more curl. Uh, you do want to have a you do want to have a driver with a good amount of top spin um, because you will be playing your shot up to this area spot right here. You're going to bounce somewhere right in here and then bounce over the rough, which you need the top spin for to hit and then hopefully roll as close as you can to the front edge of that fairway. And that's going to be, you know, the shot that you see a majority of, uh, of people play, I think, on this hole. There is a shot to the left side. Uh, it's a little bit more of a conservative shot. Where you just try to get your shot up to this zone right here. But playing to the left, you take yourself out of a, an albatross chance. So I would not suggest that. But that's definitely you know, a possibility. Uh, playing that shot to the left, you're not going to use much uh, top spin at all. Maybe even a little bit of backspin. And, um, you know... In that situation, you're going to use uh, probably some right spin as well. But uh, in my opinion, you should be playing the shot to the right side, in which case you'll be using top spin, left spin, and then curl if it's needed. So for your second shot, depending on what kind of a wind we have and what kind of your position you have off your tee shot, you will be playing a rough bump here. In my opinion, that is the best play here. Whether or not you're going to use a long iron or your sniper definitely depends on your drive and uh, where you can position yourself on that second fairway. If you're going to use your wood, I definitely recommend a sniper uh, because of the ball guide. If you have a higher level guardian, that would also work for this shot. You know, with a wood club, you're, you're not going to need to use much spin at all. Maybe just a little bit of backspin, like 0.5 to one bar of backspin. If you do find yourself in a position where you can use the long iron, um, I would definitely go with a Guardian or, not Guardian, a Goliath or the B-52 leveled up properly. Uh, in which case then you'll be using a couple bars of topspin for that rough bump. Now if you are playing the shot from the left side, um, I think I told you wrong. For the tee shot, you're going to be using about two to three bars of topspin and some right spin. For the second shot, you're going to be taking your shot to this little island here. Um, from that spot right there, that's where you're going to be using, you know, not much topspin at all. Maybe a little bit of backspin and full right spin to jump over, hit, and then roll towards the hole. Um, also remember that this green does kind of slope back down towards the hole so if you go a little bit past the hole you'd be okay so that's the way to play from the left side but uh, remember i suggest playing it to the right side giving yourself a chance for that albatross because you know what i mean you got to get good scores to win tournaments and if you're passing up albatross opportunities then that's in my opinion definitely a bad game move so for the second shot either way I'm, I'm probably not going to play any kind of an elevation change currently. Uh, from what I remember on this hole, it was a no elevation change. And uh, we get into that and we do decide otherwise. I definitely will make an announcement on my stream that I have changed that. But uh, for now, I would definitely say don't play that with any kind of an elevation change for your second shot. All right, we'll move on to our next hole. Our next hole is hole number four. And this is a par four. This hole right here, we'll play with a plus 10% elevation off the tee box. Definitely want a power ball here. So Titan, power four ball plus, maybe even uh, a berserker ball or a level five power ball if you're going to try to go for the bomb shot here. Basically, um, you know, you're going to play this uh, this hole with your, your driver that gives you the best uh, chance to, to put it down the fairway. Your, your options are going to be to bounce it here, 
try to drive over the rough here or play it to the left side here. If you play it to the left side, you're really just trying to play it to that zone in that area. You're really playing a conservative shot there um, if you are playing it to the left side. You will play with um, some right spin and some right curl. Uh, you will use some top spin, but again, like on the other hole, be careful in the amount of top spin you use because you don't want to roll too far and into the rough or the bunker. From there, your second shot will be a wood to the green. Um, still a chance to, to get the eagle, but definitely more of the safe route. That may be the way to play if you're playing with lower level clubs, or maybe we have a really bad wind off the tee box. So for this next shot to the right, we are going to be playing this shot here with uh, top spin and right spin. We're trying to bounce over all that mess and trying to get it up the fairway as best as possible. The other shot farther over is if you're going to play it with the berserker ball. Uh, you'll play with the berserker ball. you play full top spin, full right spin, some curl. And that's the one where you're really just trying to get that shot as far up the fairway as possible. Maybe within wedge range to the hole. That's definitely a possibility. But that's definitely, again, going to be wind dependent on whether or not we get a tailwind. If we get a nice tailwind, that's definitely going to be the shot to play right there. No doubt about it. Um, for your second shots, you're going to be playing plus 10% for the second shots. Plus 10%. And also plus 10% off the tee box. So this is an, an easy hole to remember for, uh, for elevation changes. All right, next hole is hole number five, par three. And we'll just have to wait and see what kind of a wind we have on this hole. Uh, it, it may be an easier hole, it may be a tougher hole. We'll play plus 20% off the tee for this shot. And... I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that most people are going to be using the sniper here. Some people may be using the Guardian if we get some sort of a, a tailwind here. Uh, if you do use the Guardian, that will be the type of shot where you play it up or along the fringe of the green. And you're going to play it with a full backspin. That would be your Guardian play on this shot. Um, I like a ball with side spin and wind resistance, so for that reason... If you want to go cheap, go Katana, otherwise the Kingmaker, or a special ball with, uh, you know, with the stats uh, of spin and wind resistance. For the most part, most people will be playing their shot more here to the left, left of the bunker. And they will be using, uh, you know, backspin and right spin to direct their ball guide towards the hole. Do be warned if we have to adjust back into this bunker don't forget to to make adjustments for uh, moving down in elevation so you do need to move your uh, target up a little bit if you do move down into that bunker on the wind adjustment and basically all that means is you will um, straighten up your line your ball guide line uh, straight uh, and then you will just move it up a little bit and that right there will adjust and correct for that um, dropping down and elevation into that bunker. If you do, don't do that, your ball won't land where you're hoping it lands. So yes, that will definitely be the, the main play, I think, for this hole. Um, I have seen people play a long iron shot from back here behind this bunker, where they jump over the bunker, kind of land it on this little fairway fringe area, and then roll up to the hole. I haven't played that shot a whole lot. But it's definitely a shot that's available there if you want to play the long iron and not play with the wood club. And, uh, you know, if you get a really, really weird wind, that may definitely be an option and a different way to play this hole. Other than the normal, you know, guardian or sniper shot, shot from the left or to the, the front edge of the green. We'll see if that was all I had. So, yeah. 
that was it. Hole number five. All right, we're moving on to hole number six now. And we got a par five here. We've definitely seen this hole many times. So, you know, this, this shouldn't be a hole that a lot of people really have issues with, I don't think. Uh, plus 10% off the tee box. In the pro and in the expert, you know, more than likely, hopefully we'll get some nice tailwind. That will mean we land our tee shot somewhere up in this area right here. With top spin and right spin, we can bounce it over the bunker and rough, land it there, and then roll it up the fairway. Um, that'll be the normal shot. If you want to go all out with the berserker ball or a power five ball and overpower, you could definitely play that way as well. And uh, in that case, then you're looking at getting your shot farther up the fairway, maybe into more of that zone, uh, and leaving yourself a much easier chip towards the green for the albatross. But, you know, more than likely, most people will be playing the safer, a little bit more conservative route of up just onto the second fairway, uh, and then playing that second shot from there. If you are on that second fairway, you're going to play at plus 5%. Percent for your second shot, and more than likely you're going to be using probably your long iron, I would say. And basically, what you want to do is you want to try to find a spot that's going to give you consistent bounce. Um, and in my opinion, that spot is going to be right here in the front of the green on the fairway, just in front of the green. That's going to give you a pretty consistent bounce towards the hole. And uh, depending on what kind of a wind you have, you definitely want to adjust your spins for that. But uh, probably anywhere from one to two bars of top spin is going to be your, your way to go for that shot. So if you are able, if we get a really bad wind, and let's say we have to uh, play our shot short which I really don't think they'll do in the pro or in the expert. But if you do, you'll play your shot up into this zone right here. Uh, instead of the plus 5%, your second shot will be a plus 10% because you are taking your shot from the first fairway section as opposed to the second fairway section. Okay, Just remember that. Anything from the first fairway section is plus 10. Anywhere from the second fairway section is plus 5. So... From your shot here, you need a, um, a wood club. Um, you know, higher level sniper uh, will be good, definitely for the shot. Um, or if you just want to be really safe, big dog. But either you will be able to play your shot off the front edge here, uh, or fly it over the rough and play it off here. Uh, from either of these positions, you're going to use top spin and left spin to try to just get your ball up onto the green area. We're not really trying to worry about the albatross. We're just trying to get ourselves in position for the uh, the eagle at this point. We don't want to uh, miss out on this eagle opportunity. If you don't get the eagle here, you're definitely really hurting yourself um, for your position in the bracket. Hole number seven. Par three. For this par three, plus 10% off the tee box. And we're playing our shot to the same spot that uh, you played in the rookie, where you try to bounce it over, land it on the edge of the green, and then roll it to the hole. Hopefully getting yourself that, uh, that nice path on the green with a little bit of a right to left slant and get yourself the ace. They did position a little bit of a hill in front of the hole last tournament uh, so that they did make it a little bit more difficult uh, and not quite as predictive, but that's definitely still the way to play this hole. Hopefully you can get that, uh, that proper groove and get you that shot. Definitely, I would say bring a wind resistance ball here to this hole. Navigator, Kingmaker, special ball. Definitely be the way I would play it. And, um, you're probably looking at something like two, three bars of backspin for that shot coming in with the sniper. And it's a pretty simple hole. 
it really boils down to the wind direction for the shot. Uh, and we may have to make some adjustments to the shot once we do discover uh, what kind of a wind we have. But plus 10% for the shot is definitely something to remember. And, um, you know, just one of those shots we will get the feel out and dial in once we do have the wind. All right, we got hole number eight is next. And this is a par four. Hole number eight, we're going to play it. Now, it depends on which way you play it. If you play it to the right side, it's plus 10%. If you play it to the left side, it's plus 20%. Okay, so it depends on what um, drive you want to make. Do you want to play it safe and conservative to the right side, which to may totally depend on what kind of a wind direction we see off the tee box, or you can play it more risky to the left side and possibly put yourself up there near the green for your second shot. To me, it's completely 100% totally based on the wind. If I get some really bad headwind or something like that, probably playing right. If you get some sort of a, a tailwind or a side tailwind, I'm playing to the left. The way you're going to be playing the shot to the left is you're going to need probably your power four, power five ball. It's going to be an absolute bomb shot. You're trying to land it in here with top spin. Either you'll hit the rough here or you'll hit the fairway here. If you hit the fairway, your shot will roll much farther up, but more than likely, most people are going to end up right there in about that zone right there. Um, you know, or if they hit great left or great right. They may end up a little bit farther left or a, far, a little bit farther right of that spot. That's the way to play the bomb shot. You're going to use uh, a pretty good amount of topspin, pretty much full topspin, no matter which uh, which club you have. If you're going to play it to the right side, I'd say go with the control driver. When I say control driver, I'm talking about the quarterback or the rock. You'll play about one to two bars of backspin, two to three bars of right spin. You're really just trying to get your shot up into this zone right here without going into the rough. Definitely don't go into that rough. Uh, as far as your second shot goes, from the right side, you'll be using a wood. You'll be landing somewhere about in the area of where the left spot shot ends up, and then you'll be bouncing towards the hole. Um, for that second shot, be kind of pay attention to what kind of wind you have. And I don't know if you will need it, but in the presence of like a strong headwind, your sniper may not get the job done right there. You may need to, um, think about going up to either big dog or cataclysm for that shot. Even even the Guardian I may stay away from just because of the fact that the Guardian doesn't have a lot of topspin. Because I do think you want topspin for that shot if we get headwind for that second shot. So I would go Big Dog or even uh, the Cataclysm if you have that leveled up. So definitely something to keep in mind for when you do play Monday and uh, you are looking at the different wins um, for different shots. So for the second shot from the right side... Remember I said we play 10% for the drive? Well, for the second shot from the right side, we play plus 20, plus 20% 20 for that second shot from the right side. So don't forget that. Plus 10 for the drive to the right side, but plus 20% for the second shot from the right side. All right, that's it for that hole. Moving on to our last and final hole. Hole nine, par five. This is actually a hole that I really enjoy. We had uh, they they said they were going to have this hole a little while ago, tournament wise, and then they took it away. Uh, this time they brought it back, and looks like it's gonna it's gonna happen. <laughs> it looks like it's gonna happen. So from the tee box, we're looking at plus ten percent. For our shots, uh, you either play a shot from the left or from the right. And it really, you know, either way works. 
Um, I'll tell you why I prefer the right side opposed to the left side. Now, unless we get like a really good right to left tailwind, in which case you can play the left side and try to get your shot more somewhere up in there. But if we have some sort of a normal wind, like a side wind or um, like a left to right tailwind, I play to the right side just because um, in the end it gives you a much better angle to the hole. See the angle difference? That's why I like the shot to the right side. Uh, if you're going to play for the rough bump, it doesn't matter which way you play. Because the rough bump shot will be good from either way uh, you come in. But if you are going to play your shot to the landing pad area, I mean the fairway right here, and then bump it over, your shot's definitely better coming in from the right side. Okay? Definitely better. Um, if we're able to get farther up into this fairway here with some sort of really nice wind, uh, then we could definitely think about some sort of a, a long iron shot to the hole with backspin. Uh, if you can get up into a short iron range, then possibly a dunk shot at the hole. But uh, more than likely, you're either going to be taking your shot from the uh, back area to the left or to the right. For your second shot, we're definitely looking at plus 10% as well for that second shot. And ball-wise, you know, I would say you want a ball with little power. Because if you don't go with a power ball, you, you may take yourself out of the opportunity to go for the rough bump. And you may leave yourself with only one choice, which would be the skip shot over the water. I think the rough bump's a really good chance to drop the albatross. But you can also drop it playing the skip shot over the water. I have done it multiple times, so it's definitely... Uh, a very possible way to play this hole as well. So just keep those options in mind as you're um, kind of scoping out the wins and practicing on Monday, or even if you're qualifying. Just keep that in the back of your mind when you do uh, approach the hole and start to think, which way do I need to play? It just really depends on what kind of a wind you have and uh, what, what the game gives you as far as shot-wise to play. Don't ever force a shot that you don't feel is there. Um, you know, if you don't feel like the shot is playable with the wind that you have, then definitely explore other options, I say. And this is definitely more of a roadmap to um, the tournament. It's definitely not the way that you have to play it, or even I may play it when we see what kind of wins we have. But it's definitely a great starting point to uh, you know start uh, moving down that road and uh, kind of getting yourself mentally prepared for the tournament. So and that's really what these videos are just all about, trying to mentally prepare you uh, to get you thinking in the right frame of mind, in the right general vicinity for each of these holes. So thank you all very much for joining me. This was the Pro Expert Playthrough Guide, or just the guide for the uh, upcoming Fuji Open Tournament. Y'all take care. Have a good day. God bless.